I mean, this metallic green is singing. He does actually have a purple metallic hit on his chest that really does catches the light nice. Awesome. Yeah. You're killing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, people, people are going to be psyched about Tarantula. I was, when I saw that, I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> I was Blown like, away. what is going on? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the golden age of collecting right now. Transformers, 40 years, just insane characters everywhere. You can't, you can't be more excited about this. I know I am. We can all aspire to be a little bit more like Mark. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and I'm going to admit right now, there was a lot of video this week. Not for me, I was busy this week with other things, so I didn't get as much video up as I was planning, but we saw a lot from companies and people making toys and people working on toys. Got some live streams, got some updates to figures that are coming, uh, got some articulation demos had some stop motion to promote their product. So I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Not that I've never cut video into my video before, but there's gonna be a little bit more this week than usual. I'm just gonna let them speak for themselves. Not that I don't have anything to say about it, but yeah, straight from the horse's mouth. Like Loose Collector, who had an update or two for Monster Hide. Each back figure will come in a collector-friendly display box. Monster Hide will have two pair of hands and the new alternate head. We are considering the possibility of offering an accessory pack that contains an old hat, torn cape or coat, grip hands, and either a cane or a weapon. This will be announced once finalized. Oh, I'm gonna need that hat. I'm hoping the accessory pack works out. Dave also gets asked a lot about what the next figure will be in the Crypt line, so he addressed that too. The Wolfman. The long answer would be a big, angry, jacked up Wolfman. Savage Crucible has also continued giving us little tidbits, little updates on the action figures they're working on, and this week it was a video demonstration of articulation. Like I said when these first debuted, the elbows and knees are very interesting, very importy, very model kitty. Most figures with double joints, they have, you know, well, they've gone to pin visible a lot of times, but there's the centerpiece, there's the upper arm, there's the lower arm. Here, it's more hidden because everything is contained within the center joint. The hinges go out and then the in. That allows for the upper and lower to just be cuts plugged onto it. Which in your brain, you think, ah, that's not going to get a lot of range, but... <laughs> and bigger in hand than I was thinking they were. Link in the description to their Instagram where they're constantly posting updates like uh, painted versions or articulation explosions. Well, that makes it sound weird. Blowing apart the figure to give you a look at all the joints and how they integrate together. If you had told me at the beginning of the McFarlane DC Multiverse line that he would be eventually doing Blackest Night, I would have went, well, no shit. It's Todd and Zombies. That's like biscuits and gravy. I'm surprised we didn't see these sooner. Last week we got a little tease of Batman rising from the grave. This week we get a better look at the full figure and yeah, that's Blackest Night Batman. Bruce isn't lumbering the land of the living alone though. He's got Clark to keep him company. Seriously though, I like the look of Bats. He's got some sharp sculpting going on, but when it comes to Superman and his costume details, they seem a bit round and puffy. That and where's the ring? Or did I miss the part of the story where he like transcended the need for mere trinkets in order to harness the full power of the Black Lanterns? But not only that, don't forget that McFarlane Toys is picking up where DC Collectibles left off, manufacturing, producing stuff under that name. So why would they not continue the deceased line? It's just an undead kind of week. It's the usual suspects we've been seeing from McFarlane a lot. The Nightwing, the Red Hood, the Batgirl. Deathstroke kind of out of left field, but we've seen a Deathstroke in this line. They're all in that Essentials aesthetic, so it should fit right in with the existing figures. Although the pictures being in poses kind of throws you, because DC Direct always marketed as just straight up and down vanilla poses. Here it is. Here's the Essentials line. This is better marketing, one, because it makes it way more dynamic looking, but two, it also hides the super long limbs on these figures that I never quite liked. Did I mention that it's called Unkillables? 
because <laughs> why wouldn't it? Those will retail at $30 a piece, dropping in June. Like I said, this week it's just easier to let the company speak for themselves, and in Mezco's case, they posted a little video short of their 112th Collective Rumble Society Murder Hornet Krig. <laughs> That's easy to remember. See, it just kind of hands everything to you with a bow on top. No dialogue, but you get a sense of exactly what's going on. Motivation, loss in lives, fears, hopes, dreams, all in 59 seconds. And there's just something about the Hornet B motif that puts your head in the right mindset, right? It's exactly what you were expecting at the same time. These guys are drones. They're going out, they're hunting, they're gathering, they're bringing back. But I also get a big construction vehicle vibe out of it. Maybe it's the Caterpillar Yellow, maybe it's the helmet looking like the, the driver's seat, like there's a little guy in there just But the thing that caught me off guard, this comes with a ton of gear, it's got a light up feature, $95. When you hear all that and you think Mezco, you figure, oh well, it's gonna be 125, 150. 95 seems like a hell of a deal for all this. Of course, there's also a lot of reuse going on here. It's a Krig, we've seen several different color variations, but it's just nice to look at something and be pleasantly surprised by the price, especially whew, nowadays. Don't get me wrong, $95 is nothing to sneeze at, but when it comes to a 112 collective, $95 seems like a deal. But it's also a Mezco exclusive, it's Rumble Society, it's already on wait list. If you're just now hearing about it, you can jump on there, hope for the best, but I know Dis Thunder got his order in, it's already shipped, so hopefully sooner than later. Last week, Super 7 teased their Silverhawks Ultimates! I went old school for you. That and I don't know the Silverhawks theme song. Never saw the cartoon. But you know what that means? Full reveal this week. It's like clockwork. There's a tease. The next week you're going to get full pictures. And that guy is Molecular. They separated out the name and gave it hyphens for those of us with, you know, backwards schooling. Molecular. Like I said, I don't remember Silverhawks at all. It's a complete blank slate. But I feel like I've seen this design before. I wanted to say Fruit of the Looms but it's something else. Hmm. But at least that name and design makes sense together. I feel like I'm missing something with mumbo jumbo. It's a plain muscle bullheaded guy with a magnet wand of some kind. Where's the mumbo jumbo come from? Don't get me wrong, it fits the aesthetic of the rest of the figures. It looks like it belongs to this series. I'm just having trouble connecting. Like Hot Wing, exactly. He's got wings. He's got a heat-inspired color motif and design. I can look at this and go, oh, he's hot, he's got wings, it's hot wings. It's the 80s. We have a certain formula to the characters and their name. That works, that sticks, it's in here. Take notes, Mumbo Jumbo. You're gonna change your name to like Crime Bovine or Hamburger Havoc, something like that. Another perfect example, Commander Stargazer. And I, I, I don't know anything about him, but he just sings that robo song. I am not buying this line at all, but this one's tempting. In a world of jack metallic bird people, this guy rocks a bald head, a dad bod, suspenders, lazy tie, and rain boots. That <laughs> takes guts. I am one shave, one monocle, and one dish glove away from cosplaying this guy at the next Comic Con. I don't know what he sounds like, but in my head, it's kind of space crime doesn't pay, not on my watch. And the name, Commander Stargazer. So on the nose, although I probably would have went with Captain Stargazer because I picture him behind a desk, bring me Monstar, working on his third marriage and second heart attack. I love this guy. See Angry Angus? That's how it's done. Cousin Beefy? <laughs> I'm just spitballing here. $55 a pop, due out spring 2023. For the Hasbro Transformers Fan First Tuesday livestream, it was all Generations Legacy, where they pull from different eras, different medias, different cartoons, different movies, and just 
stick them all together aesthetically, design-wise, where they can stand next to each other in a display. To start things off, there was Deluxe Class Wild Rider. Now, I was deprived as a child. I never had the Stunicons. Actually, there's a story to that. I had one Stunicon. We'll get into that in a minute. You can see where this is going. Next up, Deluxe Knockout. There's a different reason why I never had Knockout. It's because I've never seen Transformers Prime. In fact, I didn't know who this character was until they said, here's Knockout. I'm unfamiliar with this character. This show, I've set my limits. I gotta keep it G1. Even though I did just buy Bulkhead because that's a good looking Transformer. Willpower, goodbye. Have a nice trip. Same thing goes for Deluxe Tarantulas. I never watched Beast Wars, but there is something satisfying about a Alice in Wonderland Willy Wonka style spider. Back in my wheelhouse, G1 Alita 1. G1 Alita 1. You can't help hearing Optimus Prime's voice when you say Alita 1. Alita. But then we swerve back into the Robo Do No Lane with Voyager Jaxus. 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 I think he was just saying Jaxus. From what I understand, he's Generation 2. You can see I had a very narrow window when it comes to Transformers. It was just right there. Interesting color scheme and design though. Hasbro veered back to my near and dear with a reissue of Soundwave. He's my favorite Transformer. Maybe not the War for Cybertron version, which it is cleaned up so it doesn't have the battle damage and stuff, but it seems like the Netflix one would have been a better reissue since was that harder to get? Moving up to leader class, Blitzwing gives us another triple changer on the shelf. I think Blitzwing was my brother's figure when we were kids, so I didn't play with it as much, but I don't have my chance now. The tank and robot modes, those are awesome. I really, really like those, but the jet mode looks a little bottom heavy and front heavy and sides heavy. There's no way this thing flies. I, and I know we're talking about a cartoon, an animated series, a magical land where big old transformers turn into itty bitty things, but still the suspension of disbelief just not work here. <laughs> That's okay, you know me. I love the robot modes, Blitzwing works. One more step up to Commander class, there's Motormaster. And my excitement about all these Transformers stems from this reveal. I did not know how much I needed this, both for my Transformers shelf and for a little closure. This reminded me why I didn't have the Stunicons back in the day, because I did get Motormaster and my first thought when I opened it up was he's a trucking trailer, Optimus Prime's a trucking trailer, why isn't he as big as Optimus Prime? And that right there, even as a child, just sunk the boat when it came to the rest of the team. That's what they're giving us. As they were talking about it, I was like, yes, and yes, and yes. Now I will have an intimidating Motormaster and I will eventually have Minasaur. It all works out. It just had to wait 40 years to do it. So I was up here in the excitement level and then I don't know anything about Shattered Glass, which it didn't drop down. I'm still excited. I just, I have no feelings towards Shattered Glass Ultra Madness. But I do like that he looks like a bad guy compared to some of the Autobots that flipped to Decepticons and the Decepticons that flipped to Autobots. It's the skull head that really, I'm a bad guy. Then you can change the head out to make Delta Magnus, who I'm unfamiliar with also, but Mark was excited. <laughs> which makes me excited because I like seeing people excited about toys. All in all, very Decepticon heavy stream, but there's nothing wrong with that. We can always use more bad guys. Various pre-orders, various prices, links are in the description. The Transformers live stream was directly followed by the Power Rangers live stream. It didn't last near as long and they only showed three figures, but hey, there's new Lightning Collection stuff. Ninja Rangers red, yellow, and pink complete the team as far as I know. That's the feeling I got watching the live stream. These always throw me because I, even though I don't know Power Rangers, I can still window shop. I look for parts and pieces, heads I can use, this and that. And seeing these with three alternate heads plus effects seems like kind of a better value than the other ones, of course, with higher prices. Still, cool looking ninjas. And that's all I got. Target exclusive. $26.50 a piece, come out sometime in the future. Did something happen with Hasbro Marvel Legends this week? Hmm. First up, the Moon Knight and Mr. Knight that were revealed over the past two weeks. Those went up for pre-order and as promised, they're part of that Disney Plus Infinity Ultron wave along with the pair of Hawkeyes. Clint gets the left arm, Steven has the right, and then Kate includes the right leg. Mark was baffless, which led us to assume that he was the double pack 
and that's confirmed by Dorkside's pre-order for the case. So that leaves three mystery guests. Come on, Agatha. Hasbro also announced that they will make the three Spider-Mans from No Way Home, which I don't think was ever in doubt. We just didn't expect to wait till 2023 to get them. This is probably another case of them shooting way the hell out there, but then it is coming out earlier which has been happening a lot lately. But I also get that Sony kept things close to the chest. Hasbro didn't get a chance to start until the actual movie came out. There's sculpting, there's processes, there's double checks, triple checks, there's approvals, there's presentations, there's factory stuff. It all takes a while, but nobody wants to hear about that common sense bullshit. We want our figures now. I'm not saying another word until I get my Spider-Man figures. Well, there may be other things to distract us because there's Thor things happening. Now, this is probably considered a bit spoilerish for Love and Thunder. So if you're wanting to go into there squeaky clean, not knowing anything, which is hard to do these days, go ahead and go do something else. Or, hey, timeline down there. Skip to the next section where you can see some sexy, sexy G.I. Joe action. This is your last chance. Three, two, one. <laughs> this week, the Thor Love and Thunder Korg Build-A-Figure wave started showing up. Just out of the blue. It's hard not to look at Jane, Groot, and Star-Lord and think, well, been there, done that. Jane is very close to her comic book look, and plus there was the Bandai SH figure arts reveal, so we knew what was coming. It's just, you know, I'm excited, but... Ah. And actually, I never got that two-pack with Groot, so th there's that. Don't know Gore. Didn't read those comics. Did he have a... Voldemort feel there? I kill gods. I'm hoping King Valkyrie will be my main display version because the one I have is way tall. This looks more in scale with the rest of the crew. I'm also liking Ravager Thor for whatever reason. I know it's just a vest and some jeans, some plain clothes, but him fitting in with the rest of the Guardians, hmm, that's gonna be neat on the shelf. But what's not plain, it may be downright gaudy, but it's my favorite of the wave. That's Armored Thor. The golds, the blues, the reds, him being all covered up, it reminds me so much of this. And as strange as it sounds, this was my main reading era for Thor back in the day. So to have the MCU equivalent of that, <laughs> oh. Then for the Build-A-Figure, Korg appears to have different gear on, so at least there's something different from the version we already have. These are popping up at random Walmarts, but there is a street date for the end of the month. I'm assuming after we see a trailer for the movie, I, maybe. Also, word is that these will not have pre-orders. Online retailers are going to get these, and when they go up on the site, they're orderable. They ship then. Hasbro's G.I. Joe Classified series also had a very early, very unofficial reveal with Dr. Mindbender this week. Now, I don't know about you, but I prefer my evil scientists to be showing as much skin as possible. Makes for a more sanitary lab environment. That's just science. Elaborate box, lots of extra goodies. I think the general consensus is that this is some kind of exclusive. Which means there will probably be a standard release too. I think that's how they've kept things so far. There's a, a souped up exclusive and then a stripped down standard. If this is real, and I'm saying that as a disclaimer, I don't want anybody to come back and go, well, Robo said that this was gonna be at SDCC and it's not. To hell with that guy. All I'm doing is talking about pretty pictures popping up on the internet. And that's all we got so far. Guess we wait. No, I'm not talking about the email Ami Ami sent out about the Bandai SH Figure Arts Mandalorian Luke Skywalker just to have something Star Wars to talk about. You know me too well at this point, don't you? Okay, I would, but it was an interesting email. For a second I thought, are they adding stuff to a figure? But then I remember. What I think happened was a miscommunication of some kind when the original solicitation went out. Ami Ami listed it as having two right hands and three lefts. The email now updates it to three rights and four lefts. But looking through the original promotional images, there's always been three rights, four lefts. There's a set of relaxed, a set of grip, a set of splayed out, and then a left Fonzie hand. Hey. Actually, that's an oddball open grasp hand that Bandai's using here to double up on the lightsaber hilt. So I don't think there's actually anything physically changing within the confines of the package they're just updating the description. They're just getting all their ducks in a row before this releases at the end of the month. Either way, there's your update. I get to talk Star Wars. All is right in the universe. And that's it for this week. Maybe. I don't know. Probably not. We'll swing back around next week if I miss something. If you want to see any of these pictures up close without me all molecular, 
I'll be posting all of that along with links to pre-orders, more information on the Foosh front page Saturday at noon. And I've been saying for the past week or so that I will be missing next week, that I'd be out of town, that I'd be going to El Paso Comic Con, and yeah, I'm not. Plans fell through. Other things happened. It's all good. That means I'll get to see the Marvel Legends live stream next week, and we'll get to do the weekly again. Just talk about toys. Love. Also, remember my sad, sad story about the Walmart employee taking away my Transformers blaster, and I hadn't seen one since? I posted that last Saturday. So, of course, on Monday, I go to Target, and ba boom That's kind of why I got Bulkhead, too, because it was blaster and Bulkhead. And I've seen Bulkhead around. I know him way more than Knockout, at least the look. And then putting that into the legacy aesthetic, and then being side by side, I couldn't help myself. So this, along with Motormaster, has me back on a Transformers high. My budget is shot. But if you enjoyed this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com or wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the Foosh. I picked some up at uh, Mayanna's great uncle's meat market. It's also known as Sauce. That's head cheese? Yeah, this is head cheese. Eat, eat a piece. I want to see what it looks like. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's it look like? What? Wait, where are you going? Oh, this paper. So it's. We're over a visual media. You can save so much time. It has it has peppers. No. And... No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> if you pull out an object that looks nothing like cheese and try to call it cheese, that's really good. No. <laughs>